What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. 2022 has been the year that people have said they're going to slow down on buying their sneakers. But in typical Nike fashion, they've been giving us some incredible sneakers that's been making people spin the block and rethink that decision. Today, we have a brand new LeBron sneaker, kind of on the coattails of another iconic sneaker that just recently dropped. The only issue is that this one is way more expensive than it used to be 10 years ago. And the question of the day is, is it worth the price increase? Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the LeBron 9 Big Bang for 2022. There's been some incredible sneakers that I really can't believe that I'm able to finally hold in my hand. The Watch the Throne LeBron recently just dropped and I was able to get my hands on those. Now we have yet another incredible sneaker. A lot of people looked at the sneaker as their grail from back in the day. We finally got it back in the Big Bang LeBron 9. We're gonna jump into the sneaker. We're gonna jump into a little bit of history. And then we're gonna decide whether or not this sneaker is worth 200 and forty dollars let's get into it all right starting with the upper of the shoe now personally the lebron 9 might be my favorite lebron silhouette it's always a toss-up between the eight and the nine for me but there's just something about the nine it doesn't look quite as bulky on the front of the shoe it just looks a little bit more slimmed down and i just i like the look of the nine but very beautiful silhouette nike did a great job recreating the sneaker from 10 years ago starting with the quarter panels here fly wire right underneath that semi-translucent mesh kind of quarter panel here here. Very dope. Now, true to its predecessor, moving up on the laces here, you also have on the lateral and medial side that 3M pull for lockdown embellishment here, right here on the eyelets of the shoe. Of course, corresponding with the Galaxy theme that we'll get into in a little bit. Right underneath that, you have the classic kind of carbon fiber looking weaving in here on the quarter panels of the shoe. Very, very nice. Right on top of that, you have the classic 3M swoosh. Of course, that's reinforced with the brighter orange leather stitch throughout the upper of the shoe as well. Right underneath that, on the midsole here, you have the classic kind of reddish orange orangish looking midsole with those orange specks in it as well going all the way around from the lateral to the medial side. You have 180 degrees of air technology in the LeBron 9 as well. Taking the top down look at the shoe here classic LeBron 9 silhouette from the top down you have the classic LeBron James crown logo down here at the bottom of the laces here almost like a Dubray but this is actually on the lace itself it's not an additional piece that you can take off. Let's talk about the tongue a little bit of course they brought the classic tongue tag back looking like a comet going through space with the lion's head the famous is LeBron lion's head on the end of it there. Very, very nice. Let's take a look at the back of the tongue and the inside of the shoe here around the sock liner. They brought back the classic galaxy print all over the inside of the shoe as well. Love that they gave us that bag. True to form. Very, very nice. $240. I mean, I get that these are supposed to be like the originals, but $240, they can even throw in some extra laces, boy. That's... That's something else. Moving around to the back of the shoe here, you have kind of the jeweled LeBron James emblem right on the heel tab here. You also have this pull tab on the back that has the word nine going across it, very nice. Of course, I also wanted to show you guys on the midfoot, kind of this resined galaxy printed midfoot plate here, very, very dope. On the insole of the shoe, you get the classic Big Bang insole. Very nice here, looking like a galaxy with of course the lion constellation. And of course you can see the lion actually drawn out around the constellation of the stars on the heel as well. The next two elements of the shoe will require us to turn the lights out. So let's turn the lights out. First things first, you have the classic 3M elements on the LeBron 9 Big Bang. Of course, you have the 3M on the lateral and medial side on the pull for lockdown tabs. You also have the big 3M swoosh on the lateral and medial side as well. Also, that little LeBron emblem I told you guys about, that's also 3M on the laces. And on the back of the shoe, the pull tab also lights up in 3M. But that's not all. And last but not least, the outsole on these actually glow in the dark. I love the fact that we actually got glow in the dark outsoles on the LeBron 9 Big Bangs. We didn't even get this on the Watch the Thrones this time, but we got them on these. And that's pretty much it for the LeBron 9 Big Bang for 2022. Now, let's get into a little bit of history about why these sneakers are so special. Let's take it all the way back to 2012. If you guys weren't around in 2012, that was quite a year when it comes to basketball and honestly one of the highlight moments in the Nike basketball line that I can remember back in the day you guys remember when we used to get different collections with actual different lines of Nike product like say for Black History Month we might get a Nike basketball Black History Month collection and we get a women's Black History Month collection a Jordan Black History Month collection well that was really what was going on and some of the silhouettes that Nike basketball was coming out with at the time were incredible this was the year of the Kobe 7 this is the year 
of the KD4. This was the year of the LeBron 9. And the thing about LeBron that was really special is that a lot of people were still super excited about the fact that he had just joined the Miami Heat and there were talks of the super team going on with him, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and we were just coming off of the heels of LeBron 8. And as you guys remember, the LeBron 8 gave us such iconic colorways like the South Beach LeBron 8. Again, another sneaker that we just saw a reemergence of. So Nike has really been on the LeBron train lately and I'm not really sure why, but like we just got the LeBron Reserve, if you guys saw that on the sneakers app, that re-released a bunch of older LeBron silhouettes. We've been getting these new LeBrons coming out that we didn't usually have before. We just got the Watch the Thrones that were previously a sample pair. Now we got the Big Bang. So I don't know what Nike is doing with LeBron right now, but they are really betting a farm on this man. But I digress. Let's get back to 2012. 2012 All-Star Weekend, if you guys remember, was held in Orlando, Florida. And those familiar with the area know that Orlando is very famous for its ties to NASA and being the home of the Kennedy Space Center. I've always had a bit of a love and hate relationship with Orlando because I actually live in Huntsville, Alabama that they call the Rocket City, which is also home to the United States Space Camp. So there's a lot of ties to NASA and space here as well. But for whatever reason, Florida keeps getting all the love. Regardless of that, Nike decided to capitalize on the fact that they were going down to Orlando for All-Star by releasing a special edition Nike basketball pack of some of its most popular sneakers and naming it the Galaxy Pack. A lot of sneaker heads will tell you that the Galaxy Pack, especially the foam posit galaxies that dropped as a part of that pack, was the true beginning of real deal big time sneaker reselling. Sneaker reselling had been around for quite some time, but a lot of people feel like it was the Galaxy Foam Posit, which was a sneaker that was canceled at a lot of different events, a lot of different stores that it was supposed to be released at, and thus ended up being released in extremely limited quantities. You were lucky to get your hands on it, and a lot of people were trying to get them. A lot of people marked the Galaxy Foam Posit as the moment that sneaker resale really started blowing up and really started hitting the mainstream. Now. You guys can sound off down below in the comments and let me know if you agree that the Galaxy Foam Posit was the moment that sneaker resale really started taking off. But regardless, that still goes down in history as a sneaker that somebody traded a car for. So in addition to the Galaxy Foam Posit were other sneakers like the Zoom Rookie, which was one of my favorites because they did a Galaxy themed version that was actually a limited edition collaboration also with Soul Collector, which was really, really fly. But they also came out with the main attraction, the trio of Galaxy themed all star themed basketball sneakers from Nike, which included the KD4, the LeBron 9, and the Kobe 7. Now, this was really special as well because this is during a time where if you guys remember, the NBA Finals for 2012 was actually Kevin Durant's Oklahoma City for the West and LeBron James Miami Heat for the East. Now, even though Oklahoma got their behinds handed to them in the Finals, it was incredible because they were still a very young team, a very young James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant powerhouse that actually made their way up to the finals. So you're talking some of the hottest players on the planet doing some of the most incredible things, playing basketball at the highest levels, and now they're releasing these super limited edition versions of their sneakers, Galaxy themed shoes for All-Star Weekend. As you might think, everybody went nuts over these sneakers. Not only that, but Nike decided to show out once again by actually releasing 15 super limited versions of these sneakers with special edition packaging over in China for their All-Star Weekend event that was known as the Battle of Guangzhou. Now, if you're one of those very lucky people that happens to have your hands on one of those very limited edition 15 packs from the Battle of Guangzhou, you might want to put them in a safe deposit box somewhere because I'm sure that that particular pack of sneakers is worth a lot of money. That being said, it's been incredible to see Nike bring back some of these sneakers that we were not able to get our hands on that we've coveted for so long for the 10 year anniversary of the last time this sneaker dropped. So kudos to Nike. Thank you to Nike for giving us these sneakers that a lot of people like myself just weren't able to get our hands on back in the day. I mean, nobody was able to get their hands on the Watch of Thrones. Now a lot of people got those. But again, the Watch of Thrones came with a higher price point. And now these sneakers came out, even though they were $170, back in the day when they first dropped, now these sneakers came out to a retail price of $240. And the question of the day is, number one, why are they that expensive? And number two, 
is it worth that much money? So I took a look at a real inflation calculator online to really see if what Nike says matches up with what they did. So 2012, a sneaker that was $170 retail price, it says that in 2022, that sneaker should be $208.17. It says that inflation has gone up by 22.5% and that these sneakers, if it were just purely inflation, should have only cost us $208, rounded up maybe 210. But no, Nike actually made this sneaker $200. $40. That's a huge markup from what the sneakers used to be. And the reason, in my opinion, is because they can. The reason why they priced this shoe the way that they did is because they can. Nike, I believe, is pricing sneakers not just based on inflation, but also based on nostalgia and hype around that sneaker. But Nike could potentially be pricing themselves out because it could actually bring down some of the demand on the sneaker. But let's think about that for a second because as I'm talking to you guys, I'm thinking to myself, is the demand on the sneaker actually going down or is it actually just normalizing and cutting out the reseller? And is Nike pricing in a way where people may grit their teeth a little bit, but let's be honest. I mean, a lot of people, especially if you were around in 2012 and weren't able to get your hands on these, a lot of people are probably gonna cough up that $250, $260 with price. Even though it's a lot of money, they're probably still gonna cough it up to be able to get such a coveted sneaker today. But you know who's probably not really gonna touch this shoe are the resellers because it's too much money. If you're a reseller, you gotta buy this sneaker for upwards of $300 and then you gotta turn around and sell it for somewhere around $325 up to $350 to make any kind of a decent profit on it and I'll be honest with you guys I don't see anybody paying 350 400 ish dollars for these sneakers they look good but they're not that good now what's wild is that the original sneaker is still trading on the market for around five to six hundred dollars right now even though you can still get the 2022 variation and these days the OG is still gonna reign supreme if Nike re-released the red October Yeezy 2 in a general release right now yeah it'd probably be worth some money but if you want my opinion wouldn't be worth anything near what the OG is worth. So I'm not mad at Nike. Nike has a lot of stuff in the stash, in the archives right now that they've been sitting on for a long time, waiting for the right time to actually explode with these sneakers, mass produce them, general release them to everybody after building up 10 years worth of hype and it's working. People are buying up this sneaker, they're gonna continue to buy this sneaker and Nike's gonna continue to make a lot of money off of this shoe at $240 a pop. Now, my personal opinion, do I personally feel like this sneaker is worth $240? No, I think that this sneaker is actually too expensive if you want my opinion, but this sneaker is also splurge worthy. And I guess that's the word that I'll use for the day, splurge worthy. I think a lot of people are gonna be like, it's pretty high. It's about $30 more than I think people wanted to pay for it. But number one, a lot of people already got the Watch the Thrones. They want to go ahead and get the Big Bangs as well. And a lot of people, again, wanted these Galaxy sneakers back in the day. And if this is a way that they can get their hands on them finally, they're probably going to go ahead and get them. They're just going to probably take the budget somewhere else out of their monthly budget and put it towards these sneakers. But make no mistake about it, guys. If you bought the Watch the Thrones and the Big Bang LeBron 9s, you just spent $500 on sneakers two pairs of sneakers. Last thoughts on these. This sneaker also reminds me of a time that unfortunately has passed for Nike basketball. I feel like some of the best things that we got from Nike basketball are behind us now. Nike did an incredible job back in the day, especially around 2012. It was kind of a golden era for Nike basketball where they came out with some incredible products that blended casual and fashion wear with real deal performance on the court as well. And the LeBron 9 is no exception to that rule. It's an incredible shoe. But in the meantime, that's pretty much all that I gotta say about these. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the 2022 LeBron 9 Big Bang. Were you able to get your hands on a pair of these? Are these still on your must cop list? Or maybe they're too bright and too orange for you and they were a hard pass. Sound off down below, let me know. Of course, while you're down in the comments, make sure that you Click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I wanna thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the LeBron 9 Big Bang for 2022. And until next time, I'm out.